Hi everybody in YouTube land. It's been quite a while since we've made a video and we wanted to do a video to update you on all of the changes. As far as the homestead goes, wow, we moved. We are no longer in the hot state of Arizona. We have moved out to the Midwest and we have a lot of property. As you know, with property comes maintenance, demolition, building, getting stuff ready for animals. Um, and we're going to go through that with you. We're kind of going to give you a tour of our new property. You see our dog in the back? There's Diva Bear. We're on the Kubota. That's right. Why walk when you've got transportation? Oh, just don't fall out of it. That is all ours. As far as you can see, I'll just do a span. That's all ours. The red barn past the red barn. Um, obviously our good old truck and then the house. Let's start over here. If I'm not making you dizzy and you want to throw up. So, this small field produces 240 bales of hay roughly. This is on its second growth. There's our house and the barn. Over here is the treasure trove. Diva, say hi. We'll drive over there and show you more. Okay, back on the Kubota. Turn the stormy clouds and all the doubt away. Sleep, little girl, cause when you wake, it's gonna be a different world. So this is the deer plot and it spans all the way from there, all the way, and in that far tree, you can't see it, but that's the point, there's a tree stand. <laughs> this we don't touch too much. Yep. We just let it kind of do what it does. You're not that fragile anymore. I know what's there behind that door and it's just waiting in the wings to pull you in. I know you think you're safe in here inside these insulated walls. But I can't hold this house together. Not forever, yeah, soon it's gonna fall. Up into the woods, and we're gonna come down the back side of our property. Oh, this is all hunting land, so a lot of the predators that you guys have had to deal with, we are going to be doing videos on. As you can tell, this is one of the hunting blinds that are on the back of the property in the woods. There's tons of trees back here to put tree stands in, but why be uncomfortable in a tree stand when you can hunt from that? Sleep, little girl, cause when you awake it's gonna be a different world. Ah! Everything will change, everything will change. This door is slamming shut. It's gonna catch you if you're ready or you're not. So close your eyes and close say your eye to spring. Sleep, little girl. When you so now we are at the barn that we showed you guys. Um, I am going to, this is the entrance to the paddock from the house that is down in that direction. So fence line splits the barn. There's a wall inside the barn so you can house two animals in there. So that is our first cow. Her name is Ziva. That was the first paddock we were just in. Right next door is paddock number two. This one is just a pie shaped paddock. It's smaller, probably going to be used to house the pigs or probably the pigs. Along this fence line there's all sorts of poison ivy. So 
Rule of thumb, kids, leaves of three, let it be. I'm new to the Midwest. I don't know what poison ivy is and what isn't, so I just don't touch anything. We'll take you out to this, what we're gonna make, our third paddock. And it goes all the way up on the outside of that other paddock. It goes all the way up here. And comes down. There's a gate right here. And then it fence line goes here. And we're planning on running from this post all the way across to this post and making this whole back section another paddock. Bye boys, have fun. Take Ziva with you. Sit on her porch and share the view from our porch. We will do that. We have access to over 38 acres, which, oh sorry, which is awesome when you are wanting to hunt. Let me get over here by the hubby. He wants to be in the video, did you hear that? All in all, we have a ton of videos that are coming up. We've got, um, we're probably gonna start out with um, working the land. Yep. We've got tree stumps in both Fences. paddocks that need to be pulled. Fences need to be um, reinforced. We've been wanting, and I, I know you guys saw my last videos where I'm like, I, we really want property. We really want to be able to um, have a place to house all these animals. We want a actual homestead. Granted, you can do a homestead when you're living in, you know, the middle of a city. It's just not to the scale we want. It's not to the scale that we want. And in my mind, when I say I want a homestead, it's acreage. It's tons of animals. It's sufficiency, self-sufficiency. Being able to, you know, grow your vegetables and, you know, have aquaponics systems and deer plots and hunt your land and be able to feed your family off of your land that's what and it's not just that it's also building relationships real close community all basically the same family runs most of this area back here so um thankfully we're in good with the uh the big bosses <laughs> of the area um they're really really cool people down to earth humble hard working we're out here for family we have my father uh his health took a turn for the worse and Honestly, my job as a son is to come back home and take care of that. So we're back here with him and we're going to ride it out however it comes. So we're a lot closer to the family. Um, heck of a lot better than a three day drive and a six hour flight. You have to think about what's right for your family and your way of living. And um, this is right for us. This is what we want to do. This is where we want to live. This is the lifestyle we want to live. And it may not be for everybody, but. Knowing where your food comes from and feeding your family the way you want to feed them. That is what we're about. And so far, for everyone that watches our channel, we're always trying to keep things on a budget. Um, a lot of us out there, we work hard just to keep our heads barely above water, which is how the system's designed to keep us. Um, all the stuff we just showed you, the access, the hunting, the hay fields, the deer plot, the stands, everything that's there... Um, along with the house, the ability to have all the animals, the encouragement, the teaching of the neighbors. Um, those are all things we've achieved through renting. Yeah. Um, we waited to say all that because the reality of it is most people think you can't do it. You can't find access to do it. No one's going to work with you. You're never going to find something that's affordable. Um, reality of it is in Arizona, we were paying close to roughly $3,000 a month to live. And that was just our bills, our rent is usually about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. Our utilities during the winter and summertime was ridiculous. Uh, cost of food, cost of everything. You couldn't have chickens. All the restrictions and regulations prevented us from doing those things. And we came out here, and lo and behold, 
we found the gentleman that's running this property out. And he's just a solid dude. I, I like him quite a bit. He's got a really cool daughter, real down to earth. And we spoke with the gentleman and said, hey, this is what we're wanting to do. We want to, we'd like to homestead. We're tired of living in the city, dealing with all the nonsense. And for him, it's bizarre because he's never lived in it. He's always lived out here. It makes perfect sense. And it just so happened things happened with his previous tenant. They were gone. We were driving by and he just put the sign out that day. And we contacted him, and for uh, almost 25% of the cost of living we had in Arizona for not even an acre total property, not including that's including the house footprint, everything. Um, we now have access to roughly 40 acres, and that's just here. Mm -hmm. um, his father owns land, hay fields. Uh, I think between all the property that's owned between the family, they own over 200 acres. And they have told me that they'd let me use the land and be able to actually grow and they'll teach me how to do the hay and how to rake it, how to bale it, how to throw it, where it goes, how to treat it. And so we've been here, we've been here now two weeks in this actual house and I've learned so much, it's fun. So any of you all that are addicted to learning as much as I am, that likes the challenge of something new, that's not afraid to get your hands dirty and honestly, you just break the cycle and the bubble that everyone tells you you have to be in. Um, this is great, and for what we're paying, honestly, we pay twelve hundred dollars a month, but it's all utilities included, Burnished all the rights everything. to the grounds, everything we want to do. Um, matter of fact, the Kubota we were driving that belongs to the gentleman we're renting from. He's like, hey, just go ahead and take it, bud. Um, as you, long as you do you know, well with them and you build a relationship, that's why I mentioned the relationship is yes. Not where in the city you're, you're taught to look out for yourself. You're not supposed to wave at people, and if you do, you're some weirdo that waves at them. Here, it's the exact opposite. If you don't wave. You're They're weird. looking at you like, why aren't you waving? I yes. don't trust you. Um, so it's kind of cool because I, I've helped them and I try to help him out. He's, you know, fighting with his battle with cancer. And right now he's winning and it's a good thing to see. And I try to help wherever I can. Mm -hmm. He's got his daughter, which I have to say hi to Katie or she'll get mad. Hi, uh, Katie. Um, she's just a sweet little girl. She plays with the boys. And hey, honestly, um, just a good-hearted kid, and it's a reflection of how she was raised by her father. So um, everything involved out here is just different. There's a piece that's here that doesn't exist in the city, and I'm, I'm encouraging everybody, if you're even remotely interested in it, don't be one of those people to sit around talking about it all the days of your life. Just really look into it, and don't be afraid to take that step. It doesn't take that much. We moved out here. I think the entire move from for us from Arizona to Ohio, which is a cross-country move. We sold the stuff we didn't feel we needed. We downsized because there's no need to have a bunch of this stuff. Mm -hmm. We made stuff money from can be that. Replaced. Um, saved up a little bit of money and came out here. I think we did this whole move, including the cost of moving here, which is the security deposit and mm -hmm. the first month's rent. I think it cost us about $5,500 total. Mm -hmm. And you and can't buy a house for that. You know, to be honest, if you own your house and your property, more power to you. Not all of us can do that, and we wish we could. But, like you said, if you've got a rental property, talk to your landlord. You never know. They may, they may let you do a garden or be just as interested in all of this stuff. And all it takes is you asking your landlord. You know, I mean, we, we asked before we rented the house. We said, listen, what are your restrictions? Because this is what we want to do. And if you're not going to allow us to do that, then we'll move on to the next person. A lot of the videos that we're going to be doing... Um, will can i mean obviously other than the barn and repairing the fences that are already pre-existing the things that we're going to be building are going to be things that we can take with us if in the event we need to move to another rental mm -hmm. um they are going to be mobile units because we understand that when you're renting like we are you don't want to put all this time money and effort into a building that you know ultimately is going to benefit the landlord or benefit someone else and you can't take with you and that's the reality it's called mobile infrastructure any of you all that haven't heard or seen him i encourage you to go on youtube and type in joel saladin oh joel saladin is j-o-e-l-s-a-l-i or s-a-l-a-t-i-n um he has a 500 acre farm he's owned it with his family for 40 years it's however mobile. every single thing on his stuff like he says can be broken down in a day put in the back of a pickup truck and relocated anywhere he wants to go um that's, that's what farming really should be and it's that's not huge because i mean when you even if you own a farm you're selling acres mm -hmm. gaining acres losing acres whatever it takes to maintain your property and you may not be able to keep that chicken coop in the same paddock all year round 
come winter when it snows, you may want to move that paddock or that chicken coop to, you know, another paddock that has more trees. Um, So having it mobile is key. And so you'll see, we'll be doing a lot of what you've already seen. Nothing much going to change. It's going to be not a different a whole scale. Lot. We can do more here mm-hmm. than we could do before. Honestly, we pushed some serious boundaries with the regulations of the side of the city and oh, the state God. we live in, Arizona. <laughs> we did. We found out what the legal ramifications were, and we pushed them suckers all the way to the white meat. We didn't give them much room. Now, granted, we didn't have much room either, but we pushed it all the way to the max, and the max was pathetic in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So here, if I wanted to have a thousand chickens free range, I have the ability to run a thousand chickens. Yeah. I can run, I can say, hey, I want to add some more land to it. You okay with me running some more fencing up to the woods? And guess what? I got free range pastured pigs wherever I want them. Um, so now, that's something you just can't do in some states. And I, I'm aware of that. So some of the stuff we're going to do here won't necessarily apply to you in the scale that we're doing it. But the method can be applied literally anywhere you go. Yep. That's the beauty of it. And you'll also notice, too, we did have to sell our chickens when we relocated out here. Um, we had 41 chickens. You guys all saw those. You saw the hoop house. We sold the hoop house. We knew that we could rebuild it. Um, Not to mention it was expensive. It, it was, was going to cost us $3,000 to relocate them to a uh, Yeah, they want now. you to get your animals tested before you transport them across state lines. And then once yeah. you get to where you're going, you have to build the structure and have the land already prepared, which we did not have. Yeah. Um, when we moved out here, we were staying with family members till we found a proper house. So, and you have to be realistic about it when you move or when you're renting. Um, you may not be able to keep those animals you've got, and that's okay because you can start over. And it doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg to start over. You can go. And just as you all know, we told you what we cost to spend. Uh, it cost us to build all those things and to purchase those animals. And I think initially, the initial cost for all those chickens in that hoop house ended up being, I think it was $125 for all the chickens and yeah. the actual stuff. We sold it for five times that. So yeah. we were able, one, we were eating fresh, healthy eggs all the time. Mm-hmm. We had meat at our disposal we wanted to. When it was time to sell them, we had other people who appreciated the time and effort we put into them. No injections, no medications. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, we actually sold them in one day. Uh, all 41 were picked up and gone. All of our rabbits, Ducks. same thing. They were gone in one Everything day. was just gone because people really do appreciate the value behind a healthy yeah. food that they know where it came from. They could see it. They came over and they went berserk over it, mm-hmm. which is good, but that actually helped fund our transition to where we were going. Now, some people may not be able to do that, or you may be in a better position where you have started saving because you want to buy land. I'm not saying don't buy your own land, but for some people like us, um, we are not in a current position to buy a place. And you got to look at it, too, as a learning experience because... I mean, we may be renting, but when we go to buy our property, we're already going to know how to raise chickens, how to raise cows, how to raise pigs, how to plant a garden, how to do aquaponic systems. So when we get our land, we can start the right way the first time. It's that trial and error and learning mm-hmm. what you can and can't do with what land, what you can and can't do with your environment, the predators. I, when we were in Arizona, our biggest predator, I think, was a hawk. That was it. Uh, that was. Are not too bad. But out here, you've got coyotes, raccoons, hawks, raccoons, snakes, foxes, fox, bobcats. bobcats, bears. I mean, we've got it all. So the fun. videos that we're going to be posting are going to have to be videos that address that. Um, not saying we can't mitigate and reach some of our uh, our viewers are from Australia, where it's a lot hotter. Um, a lot of the things we learned in Arizona, we are applying here. Mm-hmm. It may not be as hot. It may not be as blistering as far as a dry heat, but the heat is still very real. Mm -hmm. And we have sometimes during our heat peak day of summer next week, they're calling for 96 with 80% humidity. I don't care where you're from. That's warm. It's hot. Um, So even more so for our animals. So a lot of the things we're going to need to do is not just focusing on the heat, but we can still work on those programs, uh, those ideas. So if you guys still have questions about stuff, we still have the experience from Arizona where we were pushing 120 degree summertime mm-hmm. and we never lost a single animal due to heat. It never happened. Yeah. Rabbits, chickens, um, none of it. We didn't lose any of it. We just never did. So we still have that knowledge there. Now we have the fun and additional bonus of not only compensating for the heat, mm-hmm. we have to compensate for the cold, which here 
it's very common. Last year they had it, it was a mild winter, but they had it down to negative 20 degrees for two weeks straight with a wind chill. Mm -hmm. That'll freeze a bird dead in its tracks. So we have to be able to mitigate those things to protect our animals because that is our food. They are something we're responsible for and being good stewards of them, we have no choice. Yep. We have to do those things. With all of that being said, we are very excited to be back on YouTube. Um, again, we apologize. It's been a year, but there's been so many changes so fast, we couldn't keep up. We had to pick one or the other, and in that moment, our life needed to be tended to. Um, we're back. We're excited to be back. We have so many videos. We encourage you to please subscribe if you're not a subscriber. We comment. We try and comment back to every single person who messages on our account. Um, we Sometimes we miss it. We but. may miss it, but, you know, we like to build relationships. This is a community, and it's a community of people who are like-minded, and we want to keep it that way. So please click like and subscribe Yep. down there. Mm -hmm. Wait, down there. Maybe over here. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. We are up to about 800 subscribers now, and I am shocked that people think we're that interesting.